in the last one year, our teams and our businesses have evolved. Well, so has the virus. So what we need to do now so that we can come out triumphant and beat this virus for good? Let's find out. and a warm welcome to WAF Gurus, live episode 21. Today, we shall be discussing a very pertinent topic, which is the need of the hour, and that is managing teams and businesses amidst the second wave of pandemic. And here, I would request Team WAF to share the program details. You are watching WAF Gurus, live 21, part of the WAF Gurus live series, which was started last year in the very first week of the lockdown itself, which was the month of March. And by August 2020, we had more than 1 million views of the WAF Gurus Live. This is really the perfect time to get these management gurus together, as today we face another lockdown, curfew in some places, and a call to operate with only 50% functional staff in many workplaces. And yet, the work must go on. The growth rate mustn't slow down, and challenges stare at us in the face. The topic I mentioned before is managing teams and businesses amidst the second wave of the pandemic. And to discuss this, we have an impressive lineup of speakers. Mr. Vinkesh Kulati, President FADA and partner United Automobiles. Mr. Vinkesh Kulati is an astute business leader and passionate motorhead. He has been actively associated with FADA for over 10 years as Vice President and a key member in its Executive Committee. A law graduate with a Master's in Commerce and Business Administration, Mr. Gulati heads United Automobiles, which has state-of-the-art dealerships of Mahindra and Bajaj Auto. Under his leadership, United Automobiles has emerged as a pioneer, winning a multitude of awards for dealer satisfaction and sales, as well as gaining recognition for its excellent service and quality. Banwari Lal Sharma, who is the CEO at Carwale and Bikewale, a Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Science. He was one of the founding members of Carwale. Apart from managing business, his experience of more than 16 years spans across product management, technology, marketing and content. He has adequate understanding of Indian auto ecosystem, automotive consumer behavior and digital. Mr. M. Dhananjayan, a global entrepreneur. He's the managing director of Focus Engineering India, mechanical engineer by qualification, coach by choice and entrepreneur by passion. Skilled in manufacturing and retail business, he has personally trained more than 15,000 service professionals till date, including technicians, service advisors, CRMs, workshop managers, parts managers, general managers, dealer principals and owners. He has industry exposure in two-wheeler, four-wheeler, mass and luxury, commercial vehicles and other business functions like shipping, ready mix, construction, elevator, material testing. He is also a certified EFQM, that is European Foundation for Quality Management Assessor in Dubai Quality Group and IMS, Integrated Management System, Implementation Trainer and Auditor. A quick learner himself, he is proficient in six languages and understands Arabic in three South Asian languages. Raj Kalyanarajan Raj was the Senior Director of Manufacturing at Stellantis Group, formerly Group PSA, a European-based automaker. He started up and now heads the vehicle operations of Citroen branded vehicles in India, located at Tiruvallur on the outskirts of Chennai. Raj has been in the auto OEM component and earth-moving industries over the past 27 years in India and in the US. His prior employers have been Caterpillar and Ford Motor Company. 
where he has led Brownfield and Greenfield startups. Raj is a manufacturing engineer by education and has served in several portfolios within the manufacturing space. Gaurav Gupta. Gaurav joined MG Motor India from Bridgestone, Indonesia, where he was serving as the MD till September 2018. He has also worked in General Motors in India as the sales and marketing head and in various other senior roles across GM's global operations. He brings more than 25 years of experience in the automotive industry, having headed sales, marketing and after sales related activities. Sandeep Gambhi, he is presently the Managing Director and CEO, Oryx India, Oryx Auto Infrastructure Services and Oryx Leasing and Financial Services Limited, where he heads the Indian operations of a large, diversified, global conglomerate managing a diverse set of businesses covering the retail and corporate lending leasing space as well as the shared mobility space. And then of course the man behind this show, Anuj Guglani, who is the founder and CEO at World Auto Forum, which connects the auto and mobility industry in 125 countries. He has also been CEO of ACE at Work a consulting firm for training, strategy and SOPs for automotive companies around the world. He has also worked with Honda Cars and General Motors at India. He is also the founder of MotorUncle.com, which is a web app for the confused car buyer and hassled car service customer. A graduate in engineering, he did his MBA from IIT Delhi and studied law at the Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. And now, let me introduce you to the annual OEM Gold Partners. Morris Garages, MG, an iconic British car brand since 1924, taken the Indian market by storm, known for their four pillars, innovation, diversity, communities and experiences. A third of their workforce constitutes women, which they plan to take up to 50%. Volkswagen a brand that is synonymous to German engineering, build quality and safety and fun to drive experiences. One of the biggest car makers in the world with 120 plus production facilities and serving more than 150 countries. Annual Gold Partner, Gallops Motors, one of the leading automotive retail chains in India, known for their class leading professional customer service and loyalty representing several leading auto brands like Hyundai, BMW, Mahindra, Bajaj KTM, Tata Motors, CVBU and more. Once a Gallops customer, always a Gallops customer. Annual Partners, Focus Engineering India and Focus Technologies Dubai that offers services like auditing, training, mentoring, consulting, data analysis, market research, business ideas in the field of automotive industry worldwide. K2B Learning, one of the leading players of corporate training offering innovative blended learning approach, which includes technology-based learning, instructor-led, experiential learning through outbound training and business simulations. MotorUncle.com, a web app for the confused car buyer and the hassled car service customer. MotorUncle.com offers report cards of car based on top experts and actual user ratings. Annual Associate Partner, Jubilant Motorworks. Jubilant Motorworks is the award-winning automobile arm of the Jubilant Bhartia Group. They are known for their professional workforce and memorable customer experience. They represent MG and Audi in several markets in India. Media Partners, Patriot, a newspaper with a fine lineage, started more than six decades back by Bharat Ratna Aruna Asif Aliji. The newspaper is known for their unbiased and engaging editorials. WAF TV, the broadcasting arm of World Auto Forum, the very place where you're watching this program live. WAF TV hosts hundreds of videos of top industry hawk leaders to empower you with knowledge and mentoring. WAF TV is just a Google away. Exposim. Exposim is the virtual platform for conferences, exhibitions, expos. It can be set up quickly, works in DIY format, doesn't need an app to access and is device agnostic. So now over to you, Anuj. Thanks, Adan Kiran, ma'am, for this elaborate introduction of our speakers and our dear annual partners, without whom we are nowhere. 
So friends, the topic we have chosen for today's Vag Guru's live session is extremely pertinent, and that is managing our teams and businesses amidst the second wave. I'll come to the points uh, right away without wasting any more time. So you know, our teams and businesses have evolved all through 2020, and well, so has the virus. That's bad news. Well, 100 years back, the Spanish flu had three waves, with the second one deadlier than the first one. Well, we have already adjusted, tweaked our way of working. What more needs to be done by us? Digital adoption has been at its peak. Would we need a digital 2.0 for the second wave? What are the new challenges the second wave throws at us? How should we equip, prepare, and empower our teams for the second wave? How would the markets change? You know, already the consumer behavior has shifted. What more shifts do we expect? The markets have already gone down a bit. You know, the CAGR has, would be flatter than ever before. Most of the markets growth is negative. What would be the shifts in market and consumer? And what changes in business we need to do now to protect our uh, cash flows? So with this, I will uh, request the WAF team to stop sharing the screen, and we begin this conversation. So getting right away, uh, Vinkesh Ji, Vinkesh Bhai in the conversation, because uh, Vinkesh Bhai represents the biggest body of automotive dealers in the country, the flagship body. So let's hear from you, Vinkesh Bhai. What is the sentiment at the ground level, and how are we equipping and empowering ourselves for the second wave? So uh, thanks, Anuj, for having me. Uh, it's a real uh, Good panel of eminent people, and I am blessed. Uh, I am privileged to be joining this. See, very frankly, the topic is very good. Managing teams and business amidst the second wave. Uh, uh, normally, what the best leader or the best dealership dealership uh, personnel or the manager or the owner, for him, the team or the manpower is the most important thing. So, obviously, in, a, in the dealership scenario, also our manpower, our team is the heart of the business. So the most important job of our DP is actually to manage teams and with a great idea, they manage the business. They understand the customer's need, improve efficiency, expansion, all those things. Obviously, this second wave of pandemic is, 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 is a bigger problem for us. So this job has become more imperative for all the leaders to manage their manpower, keep their morale high because uh, one major important thing which is different from last year if everybody agrees is the uh, intensity which this covid has hit us so basically we were unaware about covid covid last year and uh, even a, even we when we came to know somebody having cough or somebody having effect in lungs we were panicking last year but today i feel those are the things which is happening to most of us so most of us means uh, it was 70 years before, 60 years before. Now it's happening to youngsters, teenagers, uh, any age. So uh, the the bar what we had last time that there is an age issue, which is not anymore. So uh, I, I feel uh, most of these states, most of these cities, there wouldn't be any family left over where one, at least one is not COVID positive. So or, or at least everybody has some issue or not with the COVID in their immediate family or their uh, bigger family. So obviously uh, for us, it, it's a very important stage and uh, we as dealers, we as leaders are uh, on the ground uh, trying to motivate our manpower as much as we can. And uh, to give you some statistics, if we take around 15 to 20% of our dealership manpower is COVID positive as of now and going through home isolations or in in an hospital and uh, additional to that the bigger worry or you can say the one more worry is that around 15 percent of our manpower has actually left and go, gone to their village which means the migrate uh, migration which happened last year the exodus in the huge form it's now 15 percent but last year it's uh, it saw when we were actually closed but this time the dealership is open and around 35% manpower is down. No doubt the business is also down. So uh, I was just discussing with our team uh, in the morning, the dealership, Some we have a, a council meeting today. So we were discussing that the service volume has also gone down 30 to 35%. So people are not moving out. So obviously they are not coming down to workshop, uh, but uh, overall uh, uh, the, uh, you can say mental status in the dealerships are not that positive. So, uh, just wearing mask, 
keeping social distance even with that the manpower is not that positive so a lot of negativity is there so at this time i feel uh, everybody in the system who can do anything to uh, improve the morale of manpower increase them uh maybe by communication there are a lot of things which you can do that it's everything and at this time i feel the reward and recognition is not important maybe the hand holding is more important sitting with them talking to them and uh, making them understand that we are all in the same boat and things will improve some day obviously we don't know when this is the most important or the imperative job of any leader in any organization maybe auto maybe industry anything and uh, coincidentally i run in hospital also so i know on the other side also and that is more scarier than what we are seeing from this side so uh, it's better that as an industry as a leader we should try to break this chain on our own uh, we we i feel we don't need a compulsory lockdown being imposed on us which i feel that uh, uh, central government is not interested to but as as a dealership as an industry we should see how the things are at the ground and think need be to maybe close for a day or two if we find somebody positive and maintain whatever precaution we can do to at least break this chain that's from my side as a right right vinkesh bhai so as you mentioned that the service revenues after sales revenues are down by 30 35% 15 to 20% of our manpower is covid positive around the same percentage has gone back home so in a way the migrant exodus so do you expect a similar exodus to happen this time and uh, how do you think we can get back on track you know uh, how sh what should be the top 3 things every dealership in the country should be doing every dealer principle should live by to ensure we come out triumphant triumphant see uh, last covid has taught us lot really taught us lot and fda had been uh, training uh, giving webinars and explaining to dealers what to do so obviously uh, it's it's uh, it's the similar things we have to do but now it maybe it's the uh, you have to go to a more uh, deeper level as what we have done last year so basically uh, the touch of employees have to increase a lot as compared so last time we did virtual meetings and all that but this time as we are open and virtual meetings won't help so everybody has to discuss sit down with each and every employee obviously with social distancing and seeing the precautions and uh, understand their concerns and try a way where we can improve their mental health and uh, if possible ask them to work from home obviously in dealerships it's a bit bit difficult because normally there are less number of posts which can work from home in an automobile dealership but still whatever we can people like receptionist customer care executives or whoever is working on a computer and can work uh remotely with the dms we sh we are all doing that and that is what is the concern uh, but additionally wherever a person or a team member is covid uh, positive it's it's the the kind of support given to him and his family is the most important thing uh, what a dealer should do and obviously once you do with one manpower the whole dealership team comes to know that the dealer thinks positive about this and they'll support even at the such time so obviously uh with we had already done this training last year and we had expected every dealer to come up with a mediclaim policy which covers covid and the after effect of covid so most of them took those policy there were a lot of policies already so whatever upgradation there was needed has been done so at least that problem is not as of today so every employee is insured and uh, there is no financial issues in all this but Uh, overall the dealers are supporting a lot so whoever is down whoever family is down we are sending the uh, you can say the uh, wherever needed the ration is going or the food is going whatever support is needed this time it's actually not a employer employee relationship it's it's a, it's like a colleague so if any one of your colleague is down you have to be there to support to him and these things are down so a month or two we'll see down maybe sales down maybe services down attendance is down but things will come back and when they come back we'll be seeing a good growth so at that time if we are all together it will be a good time for all of us absolutely so vinkesh bhai has a very clear cut message that just the way last since last year since the first wave the webinars have been done by fda 
uh, they had ensured that all the dealers are giving medi claim policies to their employees so that so this year the second wave the most important thing being that you just have to be there for them and their families and of course there would be a compensatory growth or a pent up growth as we saw last time too so with that switching gears and coming to uh, one of the biggest uh, shared mobility companies in the country oryx auto so mr sandeep gambhir so sandeep is also a wav star by the way he won a world auto forum award as a wav star uh, just a couple of months back so in dealerships a uh, couple of things might be done by employees from home but uh, you know in a uh, in corporate employee transportation business uh, the drivers can't work from home can they so sandeep what is that different thing that you might be doing this time for the second wave so that we all come out triumphant your teams are ready to survive and thrive uh thanks anuj thanks for having me there uh, it's good to share a uh, screen with a lot of other panelists uh, the theme that you've chosen is also pretty apt actually this is an anniversary edition i was there last time when you did the same session in the first week of april so it, i'm not very happy celebrating the first anniversary uh, it's it's not a happy feeling discussing the same topic uh, but the topic is uh, i would if i were you i would have slightly changed the topic rather than managing teams and business i would have said manage teams business will get managed on its own uh, oh. which is what uh, vinkesh also alluded to perfect i think that is uh, consider it changed <laughs> yeah. uh, because that is something that uh, needs to everything else will come back uh, we've seen it in the past uh the sad part is the person might not come back and we are seeing a lot of that happen and i uh, and i think that is where uh, uh, our heart should go out uh, it's the managing the team's part it's it's extremely critical uh the level of preparedness despite being in this pandemic for a year is still not there uh, there needs to be panic which is not there you go out on the street even today we have a so called uh, curfew lockdown and all but Uh, what you hear from people outside is yes you will have the tomorrow or day after tomorrow morning newspaper telling you the pollution level has come down the birds are chirping it's all green the sky is blue third day it'll all go away and that is the point that we are all missing out uh, that the panic needs to set in right now the infrastructure the health infrastructure is crumbling every other person that you hear <laughs> or i mean uh, i stay in a lane which has 25 houses every fourth house is covid positive uh so so when we are hearing 20000 numbers in delhi which is scary and 2 lakh 30000 people in india i think the numbers are even higher so sure. the the amount of uh, fear that they should have got it it's slowly trickling in but i think it needs to be definitely more than that and that, because we need to survive the time frame and survive it you know i'm not i'm not talking about literal survival but the amount of mental pressure it's leaving on the people or on the teams it's phenomenal the uncertainty is just one part of it but just the fact that when am i going to get infected or my near and dear one is got infected i think those are the mental pressures uncertainties that people are going through and as leaders uh, that becomes our primary responsibility to manage teams business is incidental it will happen we've seen it in the last 6 months i i've seen it for oryx and i think the industry also everybody here who's representing a company they would have seen that the bounce back that happened in the last 6 months is phenomenal it's better than what we had expected you know the first second month we thought it's pent up demand uh, it kind of sustained we at oryx uh, you know i posted something on linkedin today we had our best ever quarter in the last 20 years in leasing we crossed 100 crores of leasing the first time ever we've done that and it's not that there was pent up demand the pent up demand was august september right. the business has kind of built up so i believe very strongly uh, i believe very strongly in the resilience of the people i also believe in the perseverance and the belief that people have that they will bounce back very sharply if you look at uh, the last 6 months the way bounce back has happened in every industry it, it it tells us that people are willing to come back so a bit of panic is required for us to uh, go through i agree with venkesh bhai where he said that hand holding i mean not the literal hand holding because you have to maintain social distancing <laughs> but uh, Now the hand holding the mentoring is something that is so critical you need to be there for the teams right now because the teams are going to be there for tomorrow uh, they will make sure that the business will come back we are uh, at least as an indian community and across uh, the globe uh, our eagerness to come back and assume it's no normal it's very strong that is what the first wave also taught us and 
you know we're calling it the second wave but different cities i am i am based in delhi delhi is witnessing its fourth wave actually mm. the first wave peaked at 2500 then 5000 then 8000 and now 20000 and still not stopping so i don't know which wave it is and when is this going to stop uh, and every time you get into it you tend to get a bit smarter but that panic panic element is still missing and i would urge everybody who's listening also that you know uh, create a sense of panic so that uh, otherwise covid will al- always be a number so sandeep till such time it hits your house so sandeep uh, let's talk about panic you know it's, it's important to panic but you know there's a very fine line uh, between panic and it affecting your mental health because last year we all saw lockdown we all were you know locked up in our homes hold up and there were there were huge mental health issues and people then suddenly start coming out you know every alternate day coming to office and every day coming to office and slowly when things were getting back to normal it's you know far you know worse than what it was earlier so when people start coming in the mood oh my god not again and not this way what is that we need to do for their mental health at this juncture so so uh, you know very valid point uh, i agree there's a thin line uh, but uh, you know the thin line uh, it's it's important to err on the side of caution right now uh, you go out you still pe- see people without masks that's that when i meant panic i meant panic don't just sit in the house lock yourself up but take all the precautions assume it's much closer to you rather than just seeing it as a number on your mobile app or reading it in the newspaper you have to believe it can happen to anybody because it's happening to anybody absolutely and the roles that we play as organizations or leaders are making sure we are uh, there with people i was reminding people in my whatsapp groups today time for tambola again <laughs> that's, that's what we did last year and you know on a lighter note all of that needs to be done mm. some may find it a bit uh, funny or a witty or something but that is what probably you'll need to do for the next the government is not ready for lockdown but we've closed down our offices in all bigger cities already for the last you know bombay pune obviously this uh, the state government came up mm. delhi we are now closed for a week bangalore we are closed for a week uh, but that doesn't mean work is stopped absolutely uh, our engagement level needs to be at a much higher level with people reaching out uh, more in fact what we've done uh, we used to have something called a mentorship program uh, where each of uh, so me and my one downs would mentor seven eight people across the organization for a year okay. uh, we had a phase one we kind of slowed down middle of last year we've relaunched it because we realize you're mentoring people if you can uh, coach them to handle the mental pressure well maybe they would be able to percolate it down to the people that they manage and i think that is where the difference needs to be made that uh, the, the touch the not the physical touch but the mental connect uh, and being around is far more critical right now business i think business will come back strongly absolutely. like it has uh, like we've seen in the past absolutely so we need to be physically distanced socially we need to be closer than ever before exactly. much more than last year so switching gears on that and getting gorov in the conversation so gorov is the chief commercial officer of mg motor india and uh, he's had stints uh, not just in india but all, uh, several locations all over the world and mg uh, india has just launched uh, the shield plus suite so gorov uh, please do uh, share uh, you know how your organization is dealing uh, with your teams at your organization and of course at your dealerships and your suppliers all yours thanks anuj ji you know i'll probably also take a leap over what sandeep and mitesh ji have said earlier you know to me the current situation uh, is similar to if you are batting and you've got bumrah bowling at you just because you've been able to you know defend the first ball doesn't mean that you'll be able to defend the second ball again so you need to take your stance again do your ritual make sure that you are again well prepared for that delivery likewise if you are playing golf don't assume that your second shot will be <clears throat> you know uh, as good if your first shot was good so point is don't take things for granted that that, that is the underlying a uh, core uh, you know platform that we all have to live with uh, because i think a large part of what we all are hearing is oh we been there before we'll manage it again so that little bit of you know hum dekh lenge you know that approach yeah, will bite all of us by, and you know it will bite us even harder this time because we all have been reading about the the mutation the mutation and everything can be even much, much more sharper so the way to approach this is that to except that hybrid is the way to go you know your typical approach of work from home as well as wherever it's uh, required to be on the field or in some offices you have to have a hybrid approach and then uh, the way we have been approaching this is to really keep uh, have four you know key verticals 
And paramount is to make sure that uh, you take care of your people because you take care of your people, they eventually will take care of your business. Uh, and that is important. You know, so we all talk about lives and livelihood, but uh, you know, lives uh, matter primarily and that is what every company is focusing on. So our old, overall what we've got, uh, so our NG Shield is actually a program for the our NG products, but the Shield Plus actually is now looking at all the verticals, uh, starting with customer, right? So in terms of our customer care, how do we reach out to consumers at this point in time? Uh, you're looking at a contactless program because everybody you know, is going to be hesitant to come and have a face-to-face -face interaction. So in that contactless program, we've got uh, you know, a, a program called V5, which is V as in virtual and Phi as in physical, uh, wherein we actually have got QR codes on the car. So like, a, like in a museum, you, know, you just scan your mobile and there you get into a you know a talking uh, video on the car on your on your phone itself, which tells you about the car feature. So you have you can maintain distance from the uh, salesperson if the person is at your home, which is always the case in the case of a test drive, or even if you're coming to the showroom. Right. Second important factor that we are working on right now is in the area of uh, web XR. You know, web XR is a new technology which is used by Facebook right now worldwide. Is where you actually have entire interaction of, of the car in the comfort of your living room in a virtual domain, which again gives you a large part of, you know, your almost other than the physical touch, your experience is right there and it's handled by the person on the other end. So that takes care of the, of the uh, you know, the sales part of it. You know, on the service part of it actually is, is even much better now because so there is a customer vertical I'm still talking about. So where you go into programs, uh, what we call as uh, NG care at home. So, you know, customers are able to call for, uh, you know, quick service at home. And this is like a menu, uh, Anuj, where you know that uh, in case of some places where the cars are stuck for longer time, what are the quick checks you will do, including fumigation as well. Now, in the earlier lockdown, you know, people were not, they were, they were wanting it, but they were like, we really require it. But in the current phase, you know, the demand of this activity is even higher. So we've got actually a wait list now where consumers are booking slots to the service center for customer for the team to come to the cars at their home, whether it's in apartments or, or in a lane house, to get the servicing done. Uh, also, uh, you know, two key factors. Uh, we've got an application called MedClean, uh, which we uh, provide for sale in the showrooms as well, which is actually using a Cerefusion technology, which is used in worldwide hospitals like like Raffles Hospital in Singapore or Changi Airport, which is a you know mass disinfectant approach which it takes care of. You know, so we are using that in the cars. So overall, this is the one part of customer care. Right? Next comes on the part of our employees. So of course, uh, you know, it's, it's absolutely work from home. Uh, you know, wherever um, if at all there is a requirement for face to face, it is a very important meeting, external, internal, whatever it is. It is with the maximum, maximum social distancing that comes paramount. You know, third is uh, in terms of our dealer partners. You know, so like Vinkeshji has mentioned, you know, we've actually also gone ahead and ensured that all our dealer employees, you know, are, are making sure that they are insured. It is a top up provided by NG as well, so that you know, if it's let's say a two lakh cover, it becomes a four lakh cover, so that there is no. Uh, uh, risk and you kind of you know mitigate any kind of risk possible because ultimately that's part of your team. And then again, you know, because we run a plant also, there's a large workforce in the plant, uh, and then comes our suppliers. So taking care of all those factors is important, and that is where you know uh, there's a lot of disruption which happens. But having been through it earlier and yet being prepared again, so not taking it for granted. Uh, so kind of panic, like Sandeep has mentioned, but in a way. A more organized panic is what we are continuing to work upon. Last I'll talk about is um, of, of the service for community, uh, which is important. Uh, you know, for us, we've got an entire work uh, pillar called NG Seva, which actually extends uh, servicing, uh, you know, services for our community, uh, which is our customers and non-customers. So, you know, we've even reached out last year, we started working with a company called Max to make ventilators, which is ICU range ventilators. Uh, they, uh, they treble their production thanks to uh, our partnership with them, which is uh, 300 ventilators a month out of Gujarat. Uh, you know, frankly, the demand had declined in Q4 of last year. Uh, and again, now we are ramping up, you know, uh, to support this. Uh, we've converted the NG hectare into ambulances. 
Yes. And just yes. Yesterday, uh, you know, we got to know that, uh, and we've given them in many places uh, like Nagpur, etc. And uh, we've got images now where these are providing, you know, free shuttle services to people in that area to support them. So initiatives like, uh, you know, ambulance service, uh, you know, we're providing um, ventilators. Uh, we are revisiting our approach, uh, wherein last year we had taken the cars of police, the frontline warriors, and we were cleaning them in our workshops. You know, we were fumigating them because these are the guys who are on the front line putting their lives at risk. So we were making sure that these cars are regularly cleaned, fumigated in our workshops. So uh, I would say it's a 65-35 approach. 65 of the last year programs have been, uh, you know, uh, revamped and tweaked, and 35% is fresh initiatives which are coming onto board. Uh, but bottom line is, uh, we see this uh, uh, bit of a long haul at this point in time. You know, people are talking about two months, three months. Frankly, it's anybody's guess. Uh, so to be prepared and making sure that um, we, we don't uh, give in this time. And you, you face Bumra every time with the same amount of caution and uh, energy as well. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we at WAF had been tracking, uh, Gaurav, the MG Seva that you've been doing for us you know, in the last one year, uh, whether it was the ventilators or the ambulances that you know you have been building and you know supplying also the vehicles for the traffic uh, police that you were you know uh, helping them with. In fact, even what we saw that uh, a lot of top CXOs uh, of MG Motor India donated a month's salary you know for the COVID cause. You know it's very rare and very uh, heartening to uh, to know that. In fact, one question you know we have from the WAF community, uh, which is a very special question that. Uh, MG uh, Motor India Morris Garages is one of those very rare car makers in the country where 30% wo workforce comprises women and your target is to go all the way to 50%. So how are the women at MG fighting the COVID second wave? So uh, allow me to correct you there. We are at 34%. We take the numbers very, very close to our heart because, you know, we every person in our entire organization is challenged uh, on that, that, you know, if you have to go for hiring or anything, why can't it be a woman? Of course, it's at par. And just to share a trivia with the audience, you know, of course, it's not uh, been an easy journey. Well, we all know that, you know, uh, in an automotive setup, in a manufacturing traditional setup, you know, it is always a challenge. But having said so, when we've gone for blind tests, uh, in the case of whether it's a weld spot test or a paint uh, section testing, uh, despite having robotics, some part of the work always is done manually. You know, in a blind test, our uh, ladies' workforce have fared better uh, in some of the tests as well versus the traditional men thought. So, you know, we, we are very much charged up on that. But coming to what your point is, you know, so we actually uh, had a 100-seater uh, hostel we, which we had uh, undertaken last year as part of our initiative to take care of the women workforce in our plant, uh, closer to the plant. And as we speak, we are expanding that also. So that you know they are one in a in a you could say in a in a bubble in a bio bubble so that is their home or uh, the hostel and is the plant. Second is the expansion of that. Uh, so these are the initiatives we are taking to make sure that they are well looked after and taken care of at this point in time. Lastly, uh, we also have a program called Nurture, where you know at this time many of the college kids uh, you know they actually were wondering what to do because their internships you know gets uh, suspended for some time or gets deferred. So what we did is we had taken about 200 students last year. We are again uh, increasing that as we speak and in involving them in our retail activation programs, giving them projects so that they are, one, they are, they are uh, using their time productively, getting exposure to the business. And second, they are able to value add to themselves, which will be used by the industry eventually for hiring them over a period of time. So, so a lot of work is on right now. Uh, I think the only thing is we should not go overboard this time in our uh, Zoom meetings and uh, team meetings. I think uh, India Incorporate went uh, overboard last year and uh, there were talks about, you know, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. people are on the on their, on their seats and on their uh, sunny tables or wherever they were taking the calls from. I think this time all of us as leaders have the responsibility of uh, work-life balance uh, because we know that the teams are committed and they will, uh, of course, uh, you know, do the best that they can in the current times. I think that's a very important message. We need to take work-life balance seriously and actually implement it later in spirit. So thanks a ton, Gaurav, for switching gears. So coming to one of the biggest uh, car sites in the country, so Carwale and uh, their CEO, who has been there with Carwale since day one. So Banwari, we saw you know a digital go through the roof last year. So 
are you envisaging a digital 2.0 with the second wave what are your plans uh, around the second wave for your teams and business thanks anuj for having me here and uh, good evening everyone uh, anuj to be very honest uh, digital 2.0 digital 1.0 uh, frankly uh, we are a digital company karwale we've always been so uh, i understood what uh, sandeep was talking about mr gulati was talking um, talking about uh, when and gorav of course was talking about uh, how challenges are there when you run let's say an offline business we are a completely online business so all the hygiene let's say insurance etc already taken care of people in fact uh, we are telling everyone not to visit anywhere not to go anywhere 100% of our workforce is working from home completely for last one year 18th of march to be precise we sent uh, their computers home and uh, whether you are a telecaller whether you are a ceo no matter who you are sit at home and work so this is what we did and uh, i think that's quite fine uh, running the thing is uh, communication i think helped and i'll i'll tell you one small thing which uh, helped us tremendously which we've been practicing for about a decade uh, we call it a culture of uh, uh, rhythm rhythm is uh, what we say let's say you have an annual goal typically let's say a, a revenue goal or a beta goal or any goal that you could have you put it uh, across the teams and then uh, it uh, it it comes down until the last person let's say trickles down in their own way so for example a telecaller could have a goal i have to make uh, 200 phone calls today uh let's say sales guy could have a goal i have to let's say do uh, five calls today or a product manager could have a goal i want to roll out this an engineer could write let's say so much of code now the thing is uh, goal is very large for the entire year we divide it in quarters and then months and then weeks and then what we do uh, which worked really well and it got tested during covid time is uh, called huddle so what happens is every team uh, we have like a five six people team uh, small small teams every team has a huddle now what is huddle it it used to be i'll tell you what it used to be and then what it became and uh, we used to uh, do it in office everybody let's say assume uh, we all are a team and let's say you are a manager uh, we all will come together in office at any certain place which is pre designated we'll all just stand there we can't sit it can't be a meeting room it has to be something which is not really uh, a comfortable uh, place wherein we can all settle down all of us will start talking about uh, three things what happened yesterday which was let's say the achievements or something that happened really great problems you are facing uh, something that needs to be uh, attended to you need a larger group to attend to and uh, third uh, the focus for the day not the to do list everybody will speak for a minute uh, max one minute max and uh, whether you are manager or whether you are team player everybody will contribute to that and uh, you disperse and go back to your lives and the time is pre designated pre again let's say 10:30 9:30 depending on the team this we've been practicing for about 10 years uh, anuj beautiful thing was uh, this helped us uh, during covid because the moment we went into lockdown we were already new let's say how do we come together every day mm-hmm. and this is uh, doing phenomenally well for us because as a company we are connected of course we have programs like uh, we give business updates so let's say i'll take a center stage every month once and tell everybody in the company what exactly has happened um, how did we do well what did we really let's say miss out on uh, what is happening uh, increments are happening or not are we cutting salaries or not so this kind of communication uh, help people because ultimately uh, when you are in office things are very easy people can look at you you're smiling and they say all is well right when you're sitting at home uh, they have no clue what is really happening uh, the silence uh, in a in a in a situation like covid is actually deadly so that helped us tremendously what could not help or let's say we would say uh, uh, what is uh, we are struggling with is uh, a kind of cultural deficit we are a small team um, collaborative team i have been uh, let's say I, i joined this organization as a software trainee and uh, 17 years here uh, single job now when you look at people and they look at you they don't see me as the ceo they look at me as one of the guys uh, who came from within them and this is the culture we built so when you walk down the corridor every day in office let's say it becomes very easy to say hello say good morning smile at people uh, if there is a problem you can just take them aside in the corridor and talk about very quickly that is not happening now now let's say assume uh, about 200 people joined carwale in 2021 last year we are 600 people team 200 people joined uh, last year and uh, majority of these people would not have no clue about who we are what i am what others are the management team if there is a problem should they reach out to us should they not reach out to us no amount of communication over a phone call or a video call is enough and that's where uh, our challenges i mean that 
personal connect that sitting in office doing one on ones let's say with your people your teams uh, that's something which uh, is kind of 2.0 in my head how do i get that across and i'm not able to crack that otherwise i think um, um, whether it is carwale whether it is a dealership and oem or any other company in the country digital uh, is there some adopted it really well some were adopting it and things became a little easier so they kind of left it there they are picking it up again my advice would be let's say to to just continue with it uh, as if this is your life and it has to be like that and not to be left so we don't have to leave it for a second wave or 2.0 or anything of that sort if that this reminds me uh, banwari that uh, last year when uh, facebook took a stake at geo so um, mark zuckerberg and mukesh ambani were on a on a video chat on a video conference so that's when mark and mentioned that uh, next time when possibly we'll be doing something similar it will not be through a video chat but our digital avatars would be sitting in each other's offices on the couch absolutely and that way they, uh, that might be possible and as even they had shared uh, i think sometime in december that 20000 people joined uh, facebook last year who have never entered a facebook office absolutely yeah so challenges are similar but you know the other question here which comes is that if you haven't opened your offices since 18 march 2020 then been so long you know on a digital online wfh what are the different kind of challenges that come up working from home for so long so honestly anuj i think we spoke last time also when i was on the forum uh, luckily what worked very well for us is productivity and everybody is talked about it gora talked about how people uh, work let's say literally uh, 9 8 am until let's say uh, late in the nights and that is happening and was happening so productivity whether you are uh, in product engineering whether you are in sales productivity is gone up tremendously and it never came back down so literally if i could let's say measure something and tell you 20 30% productivity up across departments that is done very very well for us uh, and i'm sure it is done for majority of the people the challenge is uh, the same thing which is uh, productivity is gone up but people uh, actually are like and and I'm, i can tell you with my own experience you can only stretch it so much uh, sitting at home alone uh, whether you are ceo whether you are let's say a, 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 let's say fresher in the company it plays on your mental uh, uh, let's say perspective uh, you you have your own visions you have own you keeping yourself motivated every day uh, uh, 365 days uh, and sitting in home not meeting people not knowing your teams they not knowing you is superbly challenging absolutely i would just say that uh, i think that's where the challenge is and that's what uh, we are working on we did lot of uh, leadership programs we we did uh, i did some other folks did we got some people from outside uh, we tend to do let's say some informal events also we have uh, virtual chai parties wherein uh, people can just come and talk but trust me i mean uh, unfortunately uh, offices will have to open again and i was looking forward to i, I in fact i started going back to office voluntarily uh, every monday for my uh, weekly reviews okay. but you need those people in office because office looks like a it's like a shamshan in a way otherwise uh, you need people there uh, and our kind of companies are struggling that way because it's completely voluntary uh, uh, productivity is up you don't have to really call anybody to office and you shouldn't really why should we because everything is working quite fine but this can't go on uh, very for very long because the cultural deficit deficit that we are going to have the management that we are taking uh, we are going to pay for it so that's the challenge uh, i would say anuj okay. Right, and I totally and totally agree with you. And very hats off to you for uh, you know really pushing it so long uh, on working on WFH because it creates it wrecks havoc you know with the mental health. And wish you all the very best for your uh, measures and countermeasures. So switching gears again and getting DJ in the conversation, who is the MD of the Focus Group at India and Middle East, who keeps shuttling between uh, uh, Chennai and Dubai. So I think he just came in from Dubai. So DJ, how's the Yeah, you know how how's how are the spirits in the Middle East? How do you compare these different markets? Uh, how are you keeping your teams uh, pepped up, and what are your cues on uh, the teams and businesses? Okay, uh, actually, uh, Vikesh, Gaurav, uh, uh, Sandeep, and Banwari touched on the key elements. So first, I will talk about Middle East and how things are being managed there, and then I'll come into uh, how we should really you know uh, learn and implement. Couple of areas that could really help as part of the uh, 2.0 or whatever you call it as. Uh, Middle East, uh, there has been a very good uh, systematic, uh, you know, crisis management planning that they have done, and uh, 
it's it's a, it's about the rules that is really been followed uh only one month the whole uh, dealership business in terms of service has been stopped because they brought uh, the service business or the dealership business into essential services so which is also very very important uh, even uh, for india to look at at this point of time uh, when, when they are looking at growth second uh, 90% of the uh, the expat or the uh, emirate population has been vaccinated so that's the last uh, data uh, i was having a chat with the dubai uh, director of bi and he said 90% of the population is populated vaccinated so which is again a uh, kind of uh, uh, preventive measures that uh, the government is really uh, taken uh, a very very you know, forward thinking and uh, as far as uh, you know between india and middle east i would say uh, the population of india is very high and it's it's, it's the, the huge population is also one uh, thing for us to you know manage such a such a you know overall scenario but it is all all about uh, uh, responsibility and accountability uh, coming within people that can only be inculcated uh, uh, right from the families so everyone uh, has to go into that mindset which is very difficult so coming into the business perspective per se uh, i have this you know conversations with a uh, uh, lot of uh, you know people across uh, the dealer retail network and also the oem network one of the major thing uh, people have to really look at this 3e e, which is employee uh, mindset employee engagement and employee uh, uh, you know uh, overall wellness in, in in perspective so what we have uh, done is uh, mind body transformation so which is called mbt uh, if the mind is really strong we can win anything in life because today the the fundamental issue uh, what what we are facing across the network is we are keeping the people occupied like uh, gaurav and uh, banwari said 9 to 8 so there will be a scenario about virtually people will get uh, you know like you know you have sugar free uh, you know <laughs> coffee and tea that you take it will become like a virtual free or you know people will get uh, breaks from all these virtual electronic devices in, in fact europe uh, they have they have already started a practice like two days they will not use any computers laptops uh, phones and everything and they go for a natural free break so uh, in uh, 2.0 i think the the leaderships will play a major role and uh, as initiative has already been expressed the dialogue leadership dialogue will make a big role in terms of overcoming this challenge so business will happen of of course money will come and everything will come but committed people or accountable people uh, if you need in a place i think uh, the leadership has to have a regular dialogue because uh, like uh, banwari said morning 9 to 9 30 meeting it used to be a practice in maruti since long 20 years now so the morning meetings are very critical and uh, uh, the personal communication is what is very important uh, to, to to the industry now that's why we we as focus brought a technology 2 years back called see it now which is a personalized personalized video communication process and that's going to be the new trend of the industry both both in sales after sales marketing and everywhere so digital wave is already there but uh, this personal communication with employees customers and stakeholders will make a difference uh wave one if you already looked at linkedin facebook uh, you could have seen a lot of motivational speakers motivational uh, writers and people are able to express more uh, i think so one important element many of us are uh, you know missing in this uh, uh, during this panic world is humorous so i think uh, leadership should engage some kind of a humor programs uh, which could you know uh, you know people are at their home we don't know what is their kind of uh, environment they have how many wife husband fights how many uh you know they don't have it see at least in the office you come out and you're able to you know stress free able to speak to people but today uh, it's 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 about that six people or eight people in the home they're able to do and about the the deadline pressures that the industry gives so if i if you if you ask me personally i think uh, in uh, in more than a lockdown or anything i think uh, there should be a you know kind of a breaks even uh, earlier it like saturday sunday is a break today it should go a little bit more so that people will become more productive they are able to be you know their minds are kept free so dj you may we are we are really jam packed with them so one after the meeting one after the meeting 
it's not only for the uh, middle people it's also with the senior leaders i i speak with senior leaders and this is one uh, issue right now of being virtual so dj you mentioned uh, about uh, being humorous so i heard someone say yeah look at the employer praises huh? that's humorous enough <laughs> okay one question we are getting you know uh, dj especially for you like your company is one of the leading uh, companies uh, you know which works very closely with the vehicle workshops you know when it comes to their audits and training and getting their productivity up so during you know these times which have become even more serious you know um, last year april during lockdown today 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 is the 17 april 2020 we were sitting at 922 cases today we are sitting at 200k plus cases so what can be done by the dealer principals by the oems to get the workshop piece intact during these challenging times so according to you top three things see top three things uh, again i'll go one with the staggered uh, operational manual right just like a contingency operational manual that has to be really listed down uh, second thing is about staggered uh, work workforce because if we get all the workforce uh, together uh, this is what exactly to provide it they they had the staggered way of uh, working the uh, you know operations that really brought in the third very very important i think in ksg will really accept is the tests the temperature checks the health checks and as i told you the employee dialects are very very important because everyone are in a fear of losing jobs if you talk to a technician or a supervisor or a workshop manager is mera naukri bachega nahi bachega right so last year if you look at we really uh, left lot of workforce and and uh, you know and addressed and that has not only not only with auto and non auto they are still struggling in lot of restaurants and hospital industries because people lost the faith and the third thing is really that uh, in imbibing the faith uh, in the workforce is what uh, an investment i would say it's an investment that they need to do in terms of time people don't need money honestly people really don't need money after this covid they are very happy they are able to manage life but all they need is a kind of a dj uh, i need money dj i need money i am an exception <laughs> <laughs> no i mean you also don't need money i mean in terms of uh, you you already realize you don't need 1 lakh even with uh, you know 10000 or 20000 you can still make your month going through but what i mean to say is the motivational saying that the company is behind you and it stands for you that's that's the message the workforce has to really get okay fair and enough this, this is what uh, uh, middle east or in, in fact in gcc when people have come back uh, to their homes they have already said your job is there just don't worry uh, you can take your time be with your family and come back even after 6 months fair enough so that is why they are able to see that commitment in the workforce today uh, uh, especially in the network when i speak to many people they need the job security in this great so i think uh, the message from the md of focus group who works very closely with leading uh, workshop owners and oems across the world is that they just need the assurance so as vinkesh ji had shared that mm, they already have the insurance they just need the assurance that the job is secure and that they are part of the system and that you are for them okay and yes i need the money still okay <laughs> all right so now now switching gears and going from the dealership or the workshop shop floor to the oem production manufacturing shop floor all right so we have raj with us raj is the senior director manufacturing production uh, operations with stellantis uh, one of the new babies to come uh, in the country just launched uh, the brand citron with a new product uh, so raj you we have, you your organization has just launched uh, its first product i think on 6th or 7th of april and suddenly we're going in this uh, you know very very uh, challenging situation so how are you managing your brand new plant and your brand new workforce hello anuj thanks for having me uh, first of all and uh, happy to be amidst this distinguished panel huh? and uh, i am the opposite of karwale 100% of my of my team has to be at the factory huh, physically uh, so that brings up a unique challenge um it's while it's too early to gauge the second wave uh i think we can learn uh, a lot from uh, from the past huh? um obviously as you said my you know we are going through a startup now startup is heavily challenged for us uh, a number of delays that uh, really pushed uh, our uh, launch back uh, by a few months um physical presence is a must for us 
and uh, our supply chain is also heavily strained no? uh, due to the first wave and they're barely coming back up a few months ago and then uh, we are coming to this uh, 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 so-called uh, second wave. Uh, but, but what I wish to say is we had a very, uh, very strict protocol handed down by our corporate uh, health and safety team. Uh, so we have a global template uh, all over the world um, I mean, the basics are the same. Whatever all of you go through are pretty much the same. In addition to the basics, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, daily briefings. Uh, we have uh, a task force that is uh, set up, uh, a person from every department across the facility. We have uh, uh, formed the task force. We have daily audits. Uh, the, um, the vulnerabilities during the course of the day are uh, during breakfast and lunch time where People are there, even though the distancing is there, people are without a mask, uh, having, their, uh, having their meal. And so those times we want to make sure that uh, there is not uh, uh, any kind of a risk of aversion that is happening there. So we have daily audits. Uh, we have a lot of education and awareness that goes on at the factory. Uh, we uh, touch on real life examples. Uh, I, I know one of the speakers talked about uh, people connect. We, we try to do that. We try to do an emotional connect with the people, talking about real life examples. Uh, we, do, uh, we do third party audits. Every, every two months, we have a third party coming in, auditing us, telling us what our gaps are so that we close in on those gaps. Huh? And also we have one other thing, we have a traceability matrix. Huh? Every person, like for example, I have a matrix where I, I have listed down all the people I connect with on a daily basis that goes into a matrix. So if I have a, if I fall sick for whatever reason, even if it's a symptom, and it may not be COVID, but I, we very quickly find out who else has been in contact with me in a proximity and we alert them right away. Okay, so that's something that has worked out for us. Um, we, uh, we ask the employees to take the learning and not keep it to themselves, but, but to take it to family and friends. Huh? So uh, we really encourage them to do that. We educate our, our suppliers because without our suppliers, we cannot make cars. We cannot, just cannot make the cars. Okay? So we educate them a lot. And uh, uh, at this point in time, I think agility is something that's needed. And we try to apply, try to be agile as, uh, you know, as much as we can. And one, one last point I want to mention here is about, uh, about how much the, the government and the, the health department has to step this up. Um, people need to go get vaccinated. I think there are some reservations that people have as well. They need to go get vaccinated. And uh, I think that's what will get us. Uh, uh, it, it, may not, it may not get us a bulletproof, but it, it, it will make us uh, make the risk lesser than where we are today. In fact, this reminds me, you know, just day before I got a call, Raj, from uh, uh, the former CHRO of a leading auto competence organization. They have plants all over the world. So he called and he was very worried because last year, the, the first wave, uh, their plants across the world got infected and it was a huge problem for them. You know, they actually had to get into firefighting mode and, you know, closing plants, opening them, first opening partially, then fully, then again closing back them back down, then again starting it from scratch. So what is the current status right now at your uh, uh, plant? Is it open? It's shut? It's partially working? It's staggered? How are you uh, managing right now, especially especially as you launched recently? We, we are working full time, as I said, 100%. But what we are uh, contemplating now, and it might even it might get executed very soon in the next week or two is we're splitting the teams up into two. Uh, trying to have them staggered or in shifts. Um, we have, um, uh, normally we have Gemba tours on three days in a week, They're going through simultaneous engineering, if you're familiar with that term. Uh, we have split the simultaneous engineering spread over the entire week. We're also coming in Saturdays if required, depending upon what issue is uh, challenging us. But we, we are doing a number of things. So. You, you list, uh, you know, five or six things. We are doing all of the above. And we are, every day we are looking for newer things to, to try and do this because we cannot slow down. Huh? So obviously the, 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 we, we are already working on the second launch, which will be later this year. And, 
that presents a huge challenge for us because of the second wave. Fantastic. So, as DJ mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, humor can be a panacea uh, to an extent to mental health. So, are you doing something uh, on humor front at your shop floor? I hope people are not throwing crankshafts around, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think uh, keeping, the, keeping the, the harmony and keeping the mood uh, lively is certainly required. But it's a, it's a learning. I will uh, take, uh, I've noted down, you know, best practices out of every speaker here. So I'm going to, I'm going to use some of them. And certainly uh, I'm going to apply some humor as well. Thank you, DJ. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you, Raj. Thank you. So being a sponge always helps, you know, forever in life. On a permanent learn, learner's license, as they say. So I think we've run out of time. If you can just quickly give our closing remarks, uh, you know, 15, 20 seconds per speaker, then we'll wrap it up. So uh, Vinkesh Bhai, starting with you. Uh, thanks, sir. Thanks, Anuj. So, uh, summary on what I have already said, uh, there is a lot of stress level. We have to keep our communication open and uh, we have not to let our guard down. Hope it gets better with people taking precaution and exercising social distancing and uh, confident with the kind of teamwork we have and the manpower is bent upon with dedication to handle this COVID spree. Uh, we'll come out exemplary and good uh, post this time. Beautiful. That's fantastic. So that coming from Vinkesh Bhai, the president of FADA, I'm sure the entire dealer fraternity is all charged up and looking forward to fighting this uh, additional battle and hopefully the final battle on the COVID front. Right. Okay. Sandeep. Uh, thanks, Anuj. Yeah. Uh, good thoughts uh, from everybody. I think I like the humor part that DJ said. Uh, we've not had too much humor. We we have sports as something that is a great stress buster for all our employees. And that is something that we do very often, uh, unlike Banwari. And I, you know, the, it is a very valid point that Banwari brought out the culture uh, challenge that he's facing, not being face to face. Uh, we started a bit early. Uh, we were working two, three days a week. Uh, and, and somehow, uh, I believe in what he said that getting people face to face surely helps. So sooner rather than later, I think we'll be back there. We're looking forward to it. I'm sure, as I said earlier, if the teams are managed well, businesses will be back soon. Uh, the teams will take care of all those aspects. I, it's just that we need to take care of the teams. And I'm sure if we've done that in the past, we will do that uh, in the future as well. Digital clearly is the way forward. Uh, you know, you had a lot of talking points. Businesses will have to conserve cash. Businesses will have to go digital. Some are in that journey. Some have done that and some are you know, had to taken it a bit lightly because uh, things had kind of come back to normal. But that digital piece is something that will surely differentiate. It's it's going to be a way of life going forward. Absolutely. Surely. Couldn't agree more, Sandeep. Uh, Gaurav? No, I just wrote a couple of points here uh, to keep it easy for everyone. I think first is to be flexible, uh, you know, whether it's hybrid, work from home, wherever it is. Second is to be cautious. Uh, don't let the guard down. A third is to be empathetic because somebody always has someone we have, we are hearing stories much closer to our homes and families than what we heard last time. You know, you talk to anybody and they would have a story in their family of someone getting impacted or in their close you know, family or friend circle. Absolutely. Uh, be responsible as leaders, you know, we, we need to lead by example and uh, be creative in, in how to manage both lives and uh, the business. And at the end, I would say be seva oriented. Nothing comes more important right now than to serve the community. Well said, Gaurav. Well said. And we will surely follow the MD Seva model on that. Okay, so Banwari? I think uh, the only thing I would say would be that uh, we've been, some of us, and especially even me, we've been living on the fence for some things. Let's say that this will go away, COVID will go away soon, and then we'll go back to that or this or whatever. I think we'll have to accept this, that this is going to be here for some time. Uh, in some form or the other and the normal which used to be what we were used to uh, last year until may not come back uh, in the same uh, intensity ever again probably. So we will have to just strengthen our thought process, uh, take everything into account uh, and find solutions to whatever problems we might have. Postponing will not work. So there's nothing going to be let's say, that won't really happen. So that would be my, uh, my thing which I'm going to implement myself. That this is it. Let's uh, let's get things right and not really wait for future when things will go back to normal. There's no normal coming from. Great, fantastic, Banwari. Right. So, DJ. 
so primarily if you look at uh, uh, the main uh, area would be on uh, employee engagement mindset so i i clearly see the leaders uh, leading uh, by a dialogue mechanism which would really make a difference and on the process is more about contactless like what doro said contactless process contactless communication which we are already offering in the market would be the in the future uh, business uh, trends so to manage uh, the uh, current scenario it is very very important that we keep our employees uh, in intact and giving them the confidence to move forward great that's fantastic dj so uh, raj your closing remarks so i think one of the speakers talked about uh, bouncing back i think that is certainly possible uh, it should not be an issue um, although you know pre pandemic state i don't i don't see that in the near future and and i think what it will happen is a the subset of a pre pandemic yeah some of the protocols will still remain um while uh, while there's been a lot of strain in the industry and in the supply chain i think people have found uh, work arounds they've also identified vulnerabilities uh, which is probably the positive thing that i take out of this because um economic uh, downfall can happen any time uh, but protecting for uh, risk and uh, and mitigating for risk is 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 key and uh, certainly uh, technology advancements working from home um remote working all of this have worked out uh, you know digital 4.0 all of that has wor- worked out so i think uh, it's a matter of time and i i did i once again stress on uh, uh people uh, stepping up and taking getting vaccinated uh and and uh, i think uh, they have to follow a discipline i think that's key here absolutely i couldn't agree more so staggered employees humor work from home mental health vaccination all important my last two sen- uh, last two cents my closing remarks would be uh, 20 years back february 2001 my, my best buddy and i we were on our return journey from mumbai during our mba days and uh, we got into a, uh, the compartment the coach and it was flooded with the followers of one guruji and i happened to have my uh, seat my berth right next to the guruji and at night before dozing off i asked him a question just randomly uh, guruji what is the secret to a good life and i just dozed off and i even forgot the question when we reached delhi it was time to alight uh, i felt a tap on my shoulder i turned around it was guruji he said anuj you had asked me a question last night i was like yeah yeah, yeah i asked you a question i i had forgotten you had asked me what is the secret of a good life i said yes sir he just said two words himmat or vishwas and i think that's what we need right now himmat or vishwas we need to have the courage to overcome and we need to have the conviction that we will overcome so that's it so over to you kiran ma'am kiran ma'am all yours so here we are at the end of this show and i'd like to thank all our speakers a very impressive lineup we had and they spoke so well about expressing our concern for the task force for our teams we are all equal it's not an employer and employee relationship but we together work and in the times of pandemic we have to reach out to each and every person emotionally financially physically express care and concern put it in actions and if we take care of them their businesses will grow on their own so it's going to be a great time ahead we are going to control the situation and we are going to take the production forward thank you once again you rock you rock you rock so that's the message from team waf to the waf gurus you rock and we shall overcome with himmat and vishwas inshallah thanks a ton gentlemen for your time thanks thank a ton you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you thank you thank you thanks anu thanks everybody thank you thanks everybody thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone it was great thank you from all of you thank you thank you thank you and gono i like the same topic <laughs>